and welcome to Scott's Inverts. I'm Scott. These are the Inverts. Today we are looking at the Nando Chromatus, the Brazilian Red Tarantula, the Brazilian Red and White Tarantula, an absolutely stunning species, a staple in the hobby, not badly priced. They do get a bit pricey when you start looking at the adult females, but let's get in to today's video. Now our spider comes from Brazil and they're generally found across the whole of Brazil. So instead of looking at individual areas, we're gonna look at kind of the average temperatures, which are around 25 to 27 degrees. So if we keep ours 25 to 26, we're about spot on. And the average humidity across Brazil is around 60 to 75 percent as well but they're quite adaptable they have been found in areas of brazil that are rather dry and really really damp as well so if we make some areas in our enclosure we've not got to worry too much now these guys can grow pretty quick spiderlings you want to be putting them in a vial with about three quarters of the way up of that vial full of substrate because they will actually burrow down and keep it quite moist especially while they're quite small the females can get up to around six seven inches the male's around five, although the one in this video is an exceptionally large male, and you'll see him towards the end of this video. The females, you can around, expect a expect life expectancy of around 10 to 15 years. The males, they can mature quite young. They can mature from 12 months to 18 months and will live around three to five years. Five years is a bit more of an exception with this species. Now, these are a new world species, so you'd think they're not aggressive or not defensive in any way, but these are probably the first ones of the new world to kind of flick their fangs up, flick their legs up, and show you their fangs in a threat posture. Apart from that, as soon as they're in the enclosure, they've dug down a little bit, created their hide and, and burrow, they seem to be relatively chilled. It's only when we take the lid off to mess around and clean them out and do their water, they can get a little bit more defensive. In fact, mine has been known to strike at water as you're filling up a water bowl. So for this enclosure, we want an op op their opportunistic burrowers. So as we've said, as a spiderling, you want a vial with about three quarters of the way up full of substrate, but then they're also terrestrial at the same time. So that, that enclosure has to incorporate a little bit of depth with enough room for it to come out and walk around if it wants to as well. And as you can see up on screen is my female. She's absolutely beautiful. Those lovely stripes on her legs really, really stand out. And these kind of develop from a really, really young age. And that carapace she has is just mind blowingly gorgeous, especially finished off with those red hairs across her bum. The males, when they mature, their, their carapace is slightly different, as you can see mine now, but they also hook out. So these hooks on their forelegs, they appear on their last molt and then they are actually mature. Although you do still have to wait until you see the presence of a sperm web to know that the embolia are actually filled with sperm. This is really, really important. And then the males can be a little bit more defensive than the females, or this one can. Um, he has given me the run around quite a few times and given me quite a few threat postures across, across his um, time with me. This male has actually come from Steve Spiders, so please go check him out on YouTube as well. I think they are just an absolute stunningly beautiful species to keep. You want to be temperature wise 25, 26 as we've previously stated, humidity around 60 to 70. And you can get this by just keeping one side of the enclosure completely damp, the other one a little bit damp, or you can just spray down the whole lot maybe once or twice a week. Anyway, let's take a look at the enclosure. This is her enclosure. There she is. Looking absolutely beautiful. Again, this is a 30 by 30 enclosure. I've gone for what I call a stacked enclosure. So there's probably about four inches of substrate at the front going up to around seven or eight at the back. And where she actually is stood now, she's actually standing over her hide. And all I did to create that was pushed a piece of cork bark into the embankment and made a little hollow underneath it. And that is pretty much it, moss on the one side. So I know to keep that side nice and damp. Dry leaves on the other side, so I know that's the dry side. And I think the two contrasts also look pretty good in there huge water dish because these girls get sort of seven seven and a half inches across so they do like to drink quite a bit of water so always make sure we've got that in there there's also spring tails in the substrate as well and hopefully i'm in two minds whether to put the male in with her because he is a bit big but uh i think we might just give it a go 
Uh, but that is a setup. Boom! So that was the Nando Chromatus. An absolutely stunningly beautiful spider. One that you need in your collection. Oh my god, I just, I absolutely love these spiders, I can't lie, they're absolutely stunning. This Tuesday we have the Birthday Bash Live, um, it's actually my birthday today as well as Tarantula Rookies, so if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, which is Tuesday, 8pm GMT, so that's 8 o'clock UK time, come over, come say hello, it's probably going to be more about taking the mickey out myself and, and Matt than what it is to do with anything about spiders this week. Just purely because it's the birthday bash. So we just want to sit back this way with this week. Relax, maybe answer some questions that you guys have got and all the rest of it. And just have a good chilled evening. Anyway guys, thank you so so much for watching. And as always, we shall see you again on the next one.